Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're fishing off Newquay Pier. It's in West Wales. It's a brilliant spot. Um, if you're a disabled angler, you could get on here and fish. It is a bit lumpy, like cobbly stones, but you could fish off here with a wheelchair. It is possible. Fishing for dabs, whiting, rockling, things like that. Just started fishing, getting a little indication on the closest rod just now. And again, look, you can see right now, getting a little bite on it. So tonight I wanted to get fishing before we got the cameras on. So what I'm gonna do is bring this in, fingers crossed, we've got something. We're, I'm fishing with black lug and squid, oldish black lug, it's quite sticky, um, squid strips, simple fishing. I'm using a loop rig on one, which is basically a Wessex rig that's clipped up. It's just neater when you're casting it out. And then on the other one, I've got uh, a proper Wessex rig, two up, one down. So let's bring in that closest rod on camera, having a coffee as well, and see if we've got anything on there. Yeah, fingers crossed we've got something on here, but um, we'll have a seat now. It would be nice to pull in some dabs tonight. It used to be really good off here for dabs, um, rockling and whiting. Lately though, the catch reports have not been brilliant, but we'll see what happens tonight. Well, there's the target fish, believe it or not. You can probably see it's quite see-through, I believe you can tell. But yeah, a little dab. Um, that's probably the average size off Nuki Pier, to be honest. Somewhere around there. But yeah, this is what we're here for. The little dabs. So, yeah, with a, a dab, they reckon. It's... Slippy. <laughs> with a dab, it's rough up that way, look, on the skin. Because people get them mixed up with flounders sometimes. But yeah, a flounder hasn't got rough skin like that. And then there's ridges around the side on a flounder. And up by here, nobbles. This is all smooth, there's nothing. So, it's definitely a little dab. It's actually got somewhat wrong with its eye, if you look there. But yeah, perfect. We'll get it chucked back now, but hopefully we'll get some more out. Got a few hours yet till high tide, so should get better as the tide comes up. Caught it on black lug and squid. Some old black lug, some bits of strips of squid. Um, I'm actually fishing a loop rig, I think. I had this one on. The other one's a Wessex rig. But yeah, let's get it back anyway. They don't do too great out of water. But yeah, brilliant. That's the sort of baits I'm putting out there, look. Just black lug and tip with squid. No elastic, nothing like that. Using a bait and needle to put the black lug on. And then just a little strip of squid. That is literally it. Um, it'd be hard to show you this rig at night. But you can see there's the lead and the snood straight off the bottom. What you do with this, you clip it into there. I'll try and show it you quickly. Um, I've had bites on the other rod as well now, so I'm trying to be a bit quick. So we get that bottom hook and clip it on to the bottom. So, try not to blind you and try and show you. We've got the bottom hook clipped on there. You can see a big loop of line here, look. Right there, this is why it's called the loop rig. It's just come off. You've got a cascade swivel there, just above the hook, as you can see. And that's for the top hook. That's for the top snood to clip to. So as you can see there, look, there's the bottom bait clipped in, and there's the top bait attached to the snood off the little cascade swivel and a loop of line there. Done the snoods pretty long on this. Um, I'd probably say them close to three foot long, uh, basically for fishing for the dabs. But there we go. Let's get this cast out because I'm missing out on fish. Off the pier as well, you don't need massive casts. Um, just a normal overhead chuck's fine. If you can pendulum and you can cast like that, then you can give it a go. But I've never been able to pendulum and you always pick up the dabs and stuff. I don't think it's about distance. We'll get this one gripped in just like that. And we'll bring the other rod in, because we have had bites on it, so I may as well do it while the camera's rolling. Maybe we don't. 
Yeah, no fish on there. I could have left it too long. Um, the snoods are a bit tangled up and all the baits have been mangled. But obviously, I was messing with the other rod, so... What I'll do, get baits on this one and get that chucked back out. We have got Mark fishing with us. I don't know if you can see him just over there. He's got one rod out for little fish, dab, stuff like that. The other one is fishing for conger. Um, if I catch some white in, which is what I'm trying to do with the dabs, I will stick a conger bait out myself, a fresh white in. But yeah, let's get baited up, keep fishing. There we go. It's actually quite a big dab, that one is. It's not, it's the biggest one so far tonight. It's not a bad size at all. There you go, look at that. It's quite a good one. And the skinniest white and I think I've ever seen. It's like a snake. Look at that. That's very weird. There's just nothing to it. It's just really long and thin. It'd actually be a good white if it had weight on it, probably. But look at that. That's thin as anything. Very odd. But yeah, that's going to become a conga bait. Um, and the dab, we'll get it back now. But that's... The dab's a bit thin, to be honest. If there was a bit more meat on that, I might have kept this one to eat it, to be honest. But, yeah, it's a bit thin. But, yeah, perfect. Let's get them back. Well, just out of shot. I'm having a quick coffee. I've had a few bites again. So, I thought I'd get the camera on for you, just in case we can catch them on camera. They're not aggressive sort of bites. A little bit rattly, I suppose. Yeah, it's good fun fishing like this. It's, it's easy fishing. Simple rigs, simple baits, bit of black lug and squid. Can use any, anything really, a bit of mackerel, squid on its own. But I would say if you're targeting the dabs, you do really want the black lug. It, I think it does make a difference. Still fishing the same rigs, uh, two up, one down Wessex rig. And then we've got a one up, one down Wessex rig, but it's tied as a loop rig basically. Just so we can clip it down. But I thought I'd get the camera on and see if we can pick up any bites on camera for you. Mark's also had a dab now, so... I think, we've had about, I think we've had five dabs and one white in so far, which is not that bad, it's, it's okay. It doesn't seem to be fishing as well as it used to, which is a bit unusual. It was only a couple of years ago, I think it was a couple of years ago before lockdown. Uh, I did a live stream here, and we had well over 50 dabs in around a three hour session. Things do change, so we'll see what happens tonight. We're about 20 minutes off high tide now. Generally, I'd say you want to fish it three hours up, three hours down, but then that depends what the fish are doing. We may give it half hour, an hour down, and we may end up going home. It's around half past ten on the night now, so... And it's starting to drop cold as well, it's quite chilly. It's typical as well, I'll put the cameras on and the bites stop. We've had a few bites just before I put the camera on. Just wanted to try and show you the bites to give you an idea what to what to expect. Fishing off here, like I was saying earlier, even if you're in a wheelchair, you've got, you've got access here, you can fish it. It's good for kids as well, as long as they're accompanied by an adult, because there is drops here and stuff, it is pretty, could be pretty dangerous. There's no barriers and stuff, you could end up in the sea. It is good for kids though. And all you need is a pack of squid and a wrap of lug. And you should have a few fish out this time of year. Something that is unusual, I've not had the rocklin, which normally you catch them more than you catch anything else but not had any, which is a bit odd, to be fair. If we get any more bites, I'll bring the camera back on. I'll get it back on. It seems to have gone quiet again now. Generally, what I want to see is three or four rattly bites, and then I'll probably bring it in. But I'm just giving it a bit of time, just to, just in case we get more fish jumping on. There's no, you've got more hooks there. We're fishing with three hooks on one rod and two hooks on the other. As soon as you get a bite, there is no point hitting it straight away. The chance of three fish jumping on the three hooks instantly is very unlikely. So just give it a little bit of time. It does get tangled, unfortunately. That is the annoying part about it. But you have to just untangle it and carry on. The best way to do this type of fishing is double patting. Double patting means you have another rig ready, baited up to go. So as soon as you bring the other one in, unclip it. You can drop the fish in a bucket of water to keep them alive. Clip your other rig on, cast back out, get fishing again, and then you can sort your fish out. Oh, there we go. Left hand rod, then we had a bite. Hopefully it goes again now, we've got the light on it. And you're also concentrating on it. This is one thing I like about these rods, the T900s. They've got the glass tips. The bite detection on them is absolutely amazing. These dabs are only an average of say, there we go, look at that. These dabs are around 22, 23, 24 centimeters average. And they give a good bite on, on these rods. 
and then technically strung rods strung like mixed grain rods but you can see the bite detection on that it's great we've had a few rattles on that one we had rattles on it earlier and it's happening again now so i'm probably gonna hit that one now on camera never say i'm gonna wait for one more rattle i could be waiting 10 minutes that's the way it goes we're fishing 10 hooks so generally you get a rattly bite like that that fish will be hooked the hooks are not absolutely massive we'll get this coffee down me and then we'll get that rod in there we go look at that then again lovely bites that could actually be a white in potentially it's a bit more aggressive than a dab but we'll see i'm gonna bring it in now mark's actually getting a bite now on his conga rod which is good to see i don't know if you can see it on the camera it's the left hand rod fingers crossed but he's got something on that there this actually feels pretty light and you've just seen the bites we had on that um I don't know if there's anything there, to be honest. Feels like it's empty. It is actually empty. Very weird on camera every single time. No fish. Yeah, what I'll do, get this camera off, get this rig sorted out, get it baited back up and get out there. Problem we've got, it's raining. I don't know if you can see the rain coming down. These microphones are not waterproof. Uh, my camera's not set up in the waterproof housing. So I've got to be very careful. I do not want to be damaging my cameras. Probably put the cameras under cover for a moment while this shower's passing. Get this sorted out and we'll get back out there. I've just brought in the three hook rig, the three hook Wessex rig. And as you can see there, look, we've got one on the top hook and one on the bottom hook. Absolutely perfect. You can see the wind blowing a bit now, but yeah. Got quite a few dabs coming in now. It's nice to see, to be honest. Not done this sort of fishing for quite a while. I'll get this one unhooked now and I'll show it you closer and they're not taking the hooks down either look lip hooked nice and simple and there we go lovely little dab right there perfect um on my left hand rod the other rod there now that one i have just put it out on a, a bigger bait for conga um using cuttle and bluey on that as a cocktail giving it a go we'll see what happens you never know do you so We'll get these dabs chucked back now. Get these dabs thrown back. Keep fishing. You show you how I bait up as you can see there that's a black look these are quite big ones these are but we've got a little baiting needle there I'm hoping the lighting's all right with that little light running for you to see we've got a little baiting needle and all you need to do is thread it through the top of the worm might be difficult to see and try and turn that way like that thread the worm up the needle I have to put my head torch on a sec because I can't actually see myself might be a bit bright for you to see on the camera, but there we go. Feed the needle straight through the center of the worm. It's gonna come out the bottom. There's actually two worms on there. We've got two worms on there now, so I'll get the hook and I'll show you how it works. As you can see there, we've got the little 1-0 hook. There's some black lug left from earlier. Just slide that up out of the way. The end of the needle there's got a little hole in it. That end is a point. So the, the end with a hole in, put your hook inside that little hole just like that and what you want to do is pull the line tight with a needle you can see that's nice and tight and literally if you want one worm or two up and thread it round we'll put two on there look you can see how fast that was nice and simple what we'll do now is put a little bit of squid on that hook just keep hooking it back through back through back through no elastic and we'll slide the black lug down onto the squid and that's as simple as it is i'll show you with a squid now you can see all the worms up the line bit of squid here i'll pull the backbone out and basically hook it in hook it back out and just keep doing that all the way down till you run out of squid to hook into it's as simple as that nothing complicated nothing difficult get all the black lug 
bunch it down just so it pops over the eye of the hook right there and there we go curling that round there we go perfect little bait for a black lug it's actually quite a big bait really but um, it, it seems to be working baits like this absolutely perfect you could probably go smaller but yeah this is working so i'll stick to it but there you go black lug and squid just like that nice and simple easy let's cast it out yeah we're getting a few taps and knocks on that left hand rod the one that's bent down slightly the closer one is the one out for congas i've left it a little bit slack with the ratchet set but um the left hand one's having a few knocks and bangs i have left it a while just see if we can get all three hooks with fish on i don't know but i'm giving it a try what we're going to do is bring it in now i've got another rig ready to go out so we'll get this in unclip it clip the other rig on and get back out there straight away going to be keeping a few of these dabs for dinner that's the plan the bigger ones let's re reel it in and see what we've got on it see if there's anything there Does have a little bit of weight there it's hard to say with dabs though there are only small fish in there Still fun though, it'd be great fishing for your kids this would. Hmm, it's a dog. <laughs> a little tiny baby dog fish. What I thought I'd try out there is a bit of bluey on it. Typical, a little tiny baby dog fish has stuck here. I don't think I've actually had a dog fish that small for a long time. That is really small. But you get husks like this, but not very many dogs. But yeah, not something I really want to be catching, but it's inevitable. You know what they're like, dogfish, they're everywhere. Same again, small hook, hooked in the bottom lip. Yeah, it's definitely a dogfish. I'll try and show you a bit closer. People do get mixed up with the dogfish and the husks. As you can see here, I try and hold it sideways. They've got no nasal flaps, it's just flat. There is flaps of skin, but uh, husk is like sort of pointed. These are just flat, as you can see. So, generally, I wouldn't say all the time, the spots are smaller, generally. But, yeah. Nice little specimen of a dogfish. I don't know how old that'd be. It could even be this year's, maybe, it's hard to say. But, we'll get him back in now. So what I'm going to do, clip up my other rig that's ready to go, and we'll cast straight back out. What I use on the top of the rig here, onto the shock leader, which is £80, pound, I've got a little thermolink. So we can just unclip it. I've got my rig ready here on my rod rest. And basically, we'll clip this straight on, which is baited, ready to go. This is more like, I suppose, doing match fishing style, where in a match you want to be fishing constantly. But pleasure fishing, it's fine. I've had time to bait it up, so why not? Let's get it out. Lightning. Lock my output wherever it is. What? Lightning. Is it? And there we go. That one is no fishing. What I'm going to do is just tighten down to it a little tiny bit. Get a slight bend in the tip. Just like that. And wait for a bite, basically. The conga bait, I've had a, a few little indications earlier, but nothing exciting, really. So, yeah, we'll keep fishing away. We're probably at about eight or ten dabs now we've had, which is a very good session to me. I'm happy with that. It was worth coming. Target achieved. Would have been nice to see some rockling as well, but we haven't had them tonight unfortunately but yeah so far dabs um whiting and dogfish if we could get out some rockling and some conga it would be absolutely amazing perfect little session and it's very easy fishing off here it's not difficult easy to get to it's comfortable you got like a little seating area if you want to sit down mark's ratchet just went then on his conga rod i don't know if you heard it in the background He's thinking it's dogfish, 
because it's not been developed into anything, but it is hard to say. But yeah, I'll keep fishing away. If we get any more, I'll bring you back. Hopefully, we don't get any more dogfish. <laughs> I don't want too many dogfish. But there was bluey on there, so I suppose it's expected. If you stick to your black lug and squid baits, you shouldn't see too many of them, if any. Hopefully, you can get the dabs on them. Well, we'll keep fishing away. If we get any more fish, I'll bring, the, bring you back on the camera. Right, same again, we're getting bites on this left hand rod. I'm going to hit it a little bit sooner. It's a bit more aggressive. It might be whiting, possibly. That's if there's anything there. Well, I've got the other rig ready. So we'll just swap the rigs over and get straight back out. So we'll just do unclip that, drop it down there, grab this one, clip it on and go again. And um, this one is the three hook rig, the two up, one down Wessex rig. As you can see, it's a lot more efficient fishing this way. You just get back out there, no messing about. And then you can take your time baiting up. And there we go, we're fishing again straight away. What we'll do now is just get the grip lead to sink in a bit, not too much. That'll be more than enough. And now we get to sort out this rig. It's possibility the baits are a little bit big on it. So I've been keeping the baits on there and just sliding them up the line. But they are getting quite bulky. The dabs don't have big mouths. So now that's fishing again, I can just spend my time now untangling this. Not that I really want to be untangling my rigs. It's why I like using pulley rigs normally. We don't hurt to try something different, mix it up a bit. I've never really used loop rigs and I haven't used the Wessex rigs for a very long time. Not properly anyway, not like tonight. But we're out targeting the small fish tonight properly. So I'll get this untangled, get it baited up, and get ready to get back out again. Doing it this way, you just get yourself in a little nice little routine and maximise your fishing time and maximise the fish you can catch if the fish are there feeding. They will switch off at some point, it's just the way it goes. So if you're not too worried, you can just bait up and take your time. If you'd like to get the maximum amount of fish out, then Get your rigs ready, get them pre-baited on the stand and ready to go. And you will catch more fish, definitely. Um, what I'm going to do is take off this older bait now, refresh it and do a smaller bait. There's no elastic on this at all, so it's fine to throw this bait back in. I have actually had a couple of messages about my past video saying not to throw your bait in with elastic all over it people saying it's a tiny bit of elastic it's not going to hurt if everyone has that attitude it will start to hurt in my opinion if there's no need to throw it in the sea if you take it home and chuck it in the bin then do that if it's just pure bait no elastic then it's fine but it's not just fish it might land on the wall and you've got seagulls eating it and stuff Any animal eating elastic is not going to be good for them. And to me, being a fisherman, you've got a duty of care to everything. Look after it all and it'll look after you. And the other good thing with fishing on the pier here, it is generally pretty dead. It's not, it's never packed out with anglers. It's very rare, very, very rare. I think most of the anglers around here have been here and done it. This is where I started sea fishing, basically. 
learning the ropes, catching dabs and whiting and rockling. And then you, you move out to bigger fish or try and catch bigger fish, fishing over rough ground and stuff. And there's this rig done now. What we're gonna do is clip this up ready. It's the loop rig. So you can see, I'm, I think I'm getting bites on that rod anyway. Standing underneath, it is hard to see the bites. And this rig is also ready to go straight back out. Uh, clipped up, just like that, ready to go. I would, give it a try. So there we go. We've got that baited up with black lug and squid. This one's out. I'm not sure if we're having bites on that, to be honest. Um, I have to just keep an eye on it and see. It's a bit um, odd off the pier here. Um, you, d you don't seem to catch cod and stuff for some reason, which it's a bit odd because the, the get them just across from here, over sand. Um, out here, I think it's sandy sort of mud sort of ground. Uh, you'd expect to occasionally catch them, but we've, I've never heard of it and never seen them myself here. So it's a bit odd. Uh, there's spur dogs been caught off here quite a long time ago. That's the same situation. I think when they're passing through, you have a chance, but it's very rare they're passing through. But if you're here at the right time, you will catch them. And obviously, bullocks, conga, dogfish, dabs, whiting, rockling. You may pick up flounder occasionally. I personally haven't. But yeah, there's a array of species here and it's comfortable fishing. It is easy. Look at that for a bite. That's a nice bite that was but you can see i've just cast that out baited up and we've got bites again instantly so that's the, the way the fishing can be here and like mark was just saying i don't know if you heard him behind here plenty of the beach clamp uh kai back beach over to the right they do pick up rays but don't seem to catch them off here which is a bit odd you think you would you think you pick them up i'll give that rod a couple more second see if we get another rattle on it if we do we'll bring it in and see if there's anything there i thought i could see bites earlier when i was beating up but it is difficult standing underneath the rod looking up but standing from the side like this you can see a lot better we'll tighten up to it a little tiny bit it has gone a little bit slack I find tightening up to it a touch. Generally will help you see a bite. And we'll tighten up the other rod as well. A little bit more tension there. And if the fish do anything, you've got more chance of seeing it. But it would have been lovely to have a big slam, slam, slack line and pull a codling in, or a cod, but Never heard of it off here, ever. Which is very unusual. That's the other thing that's unusual as well. We've had quite a few aggressive bites and taps and it just stops. The fish could be hooked, but they might not be, so. Keep bringing it in and out, bring it in and out. It's, you're just wasting your time. You want to let the bites develop a little bit with this sort of fishing. Well, it's well, you know, it's like others, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they swim in a good shoal, isn't it? Like Mark was just saying, where there's one, there's more. Um, you've got to you've got to be good with your patience with this type of fishing. Oh, look at that. I'm a right-hand rod. Conga rod. It's gone slack. Well, this rod just interrupted me. It's got a big slack on it. I don't know if there's anything there or not. We'll see now. There is, but it's not what we want, pal. A baby one. On a massive bait. <laughs> I got excited then. I'll try and show you this now. You can see there, just about, them little diamond-shaped nasal flaps there, look. I'm hoping you can see them on the camera. 
it's a very small one but if you hold its mouth in you can see the protrude look right there that shows you it's a huss so and generally they do have bigger spots not always but generally but you can see there look but like i said earlier i've had huss this size but never dogfish like the last one but yeah let's get it back and get another bait on that rod and get it back out have a quick check on the time we're at half 11 now so this is an hour after high tide maybe just over about an hour and 15 an hour and 20 and we are still getting bites i'd say generally you want to be here two hours up two hours down if you've got time on your hands you could try three four hours up and down and i generally find fishing in the dark here is better you will catch them in the day but never in the same sort of numbers as you do at night a night tide with a south southerly wind southeasterly wind not blowing too hard and it's it's nice on here flat calm easy fishing well i'm gonna pour myself a coffee have a quick coffee if we start getting the bites again i'll bring you back um try and get them on video for you but yeah it's been a, a nice little night tonight it's been good targets achieved for me anyway i wanted dabs and i've had the dabs well we've had a few more taps on these rods the left one's had a few more it's not been in since i recorded last it's still out there and the right hand rods had a few quite a few aggressive rattles i'm thinking it could be doggies probably but what i'm gonna do bring them in and we're probably gonna end the session here hopefully we've got some fish on there to show you when we bring these in and we will call it a night uh, it's around 12 o'clock now ish so we're probably about hour and a half after high tide now the fishing's still good but we've had the fish we're happy with what we've had so quit while you're ahead sort of thing we could stay for another hour or two but i've had a decent amount of dabs i'm happy got a few to take home for the plate we're probably at about 10 or 12 dabs now we've had so that's not bad fishing right get this right hand rod now we'll bring this in and see if there's anything there and when you're bringing fish in here all your rigs you want to keep your rod up and keep winding because it will get stuck in the base if i stop winding now and start it again i would get snagged up and you will not get it out actually there's nothing on it at all it's probably the best bite i've had all night it's quite aggressive and very odd If you keep winding, generally it'll be fine. And we've got a little whiting on there. It is mad for the size of the fish, the bites you can get off them with a the whiting. They can be quite aggressive. I'll try and show you this whiting a little bit. I know a lot of you have probably seen whiting, but there is new people out there who haven't. But yeah, that's a whiting there. And they've got very sharp needle-like teeth. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera there. A lot of little pins but you are you're okay generally holding them like that um they don't do too well to be fair this will be kept for bait probably it, it's probably already dead they don't go back very well for some reason he's still kicking a bit but he won't survive but then wicked conga baits so i'll keep this for a conga bait or a hus bait get it home backpack it down and use it for bait yeah we'll get the other rod in now and that'll be the end of the session well, I hope you've enjoyed the session with us here on Nuki Pier, fishing with me and Mark. And hopefully you can get yourselves down here and have a go yourselves. It's a nice, comfortable mark to fish. It does get very busy in the summer with holidaymakers. So it is. it does get difficult to cast on here in the summer. We generally fish it in the winter at night because the pier's dead. You've got plenty of room then. It seems like the whiting have switched on now. We've got another one. But they're all very thin, which is very unusual. And it's lightly hooked again, bottom lip. So there we go, another little whiting just come in. We're gonna end it on that one. I hope you've enjoyed the video, fishing with us on Nuki Pier, uh, West Wales. Uh, what I didn't mention, there is parking. Um, as you drive down Nuki, it's a one-way system. As you drive down to the bottom, it goes round to the left 
and as you go around to the left you keep driving and then via right there's car parks there they're average three four quid something like that obviously if you're fishing on here there is bins on this pier please 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 put your rubbish in the bin don't leave line hooks dirty bait rubbish everywhere please don't do that there is bins literally right there next to the telescope so use the bins or take it home there's no need to leave the mess on the pier it'll just get fishing stopped on here it's not it's not good so turn you around a little bit i don't know if you can see much but where you got the lights there that's the slipway coming down which can be used for launching boats and the Arp master's office is right there but the parking is sort of over the back there it's hard to see at night obviously but there's like a little information kiosk there just behind there you've got plenty of parking so yeah i hope you've enjoyed the video if you've enjoyed it please give the video a like please consider subscribing to the channel and i'll see you in the next one